Whoo, man. So that guy Crawford is, I guess he's upset with the fans. Um, Terrence Crawford, I guess he went on a little, you know, tirade um, on social media um, talking about how he supposedly been trying to fight, you know, all these guys for all these years and quote, they didn't want to fight him. Um, supposedly he was chasing them since he was at 140 pounds and he was calling them out and that like, what do the fans want more from him? You know what I mean? Because he's getting this, a lot of backlash now, you know, people are basically seeing it now as you don't really want to fight anybody and the low tier opponents that you continue to face fans aren't accepting it anymore, you know, especially because this is what basically happens. Like, you know, let's say certain things are going on and certain things can't be made, you know, so you look like, hey, like, you know, I really want to fight these guys and they want to fight me. Then you start getting opportunities and reasonable situations in order to face these particular guys. You're one consistently supposedly, quote, calling them out and want them to fight them. And all of a sudden you make a, you know, 360 and all of a sudden it's a 180 and start making excuses not to fight any of them, you're going to have issues, you know, especially when it pertains to the fans. They're going to get at you, especially if you're someone that's, you know, that, you know, that's on social media, whether it be Instagram, whether it be Twitter, you know, anything like that, whether you're doing interviews, people are going to get at you because at this point, people, are, they're not trying to hear it anymore. They want to see him fight against top tier competition and they're not trying to hear that excuse anymore. You know, people understand and know that with the, you know, that top rank only spoke to Ugas one time and then never contacted him, contacted him back again, never tried to negotiate with him, nothing. Everybody knows that Sean Porter is willing to fight you and he's not trying to negotiate with Sean Porter whatsoever. He's not trying to do anything as pertains to trying to initiate that fight whatsoever. People know that he got offered a 60-40, you know, split from Spence, which is a beyond reasonable, you know, especially if somebody that, you know, one pay-per-view, Spence pretty much has, you know, already uh, sold you all your pay-per-views by by a lot, by a massive amount. You know, while you're fighting on regular ESPN, he's consistently fighting on pay-per-view, you know, doing 300,000 plus pay-per-views, doing substantially higher gates than you on a regular basis. But he's still saying, hey, I just want 10% more than you. Even though I'm making, even though the opponents that I'm fighting, when all the pay-per-views and everything comes in, they're making more money than you. Forget me. My opponents are generating almost double what you make in a fight. I'm still going to give you 40%. And him saying no, people are going to feel a certain type of way when it comes to the fans. You know, as, you know I'm tired of it. I don't want to deal with them anymore. Okay, and, But people are going to sit there and say, okay, you don't want to deal with them anymore. Then, you know, why are you still dealing with Manny Pacquiao then? You know, someone that's, you know, you, so you've been trying to fight this guy for over six plus years. And now all of a sudden, now all of a sudden, you, you still want to focus on him, but everybody else you're tired from. You're, you're doing things that are contradictory at the same time. You know, that's the one guy that you've been chasing for the longest. You know, you, you're still focused on trying to make that. But these guys that you've been having, you know, quote, issues with for a shorter period of time. All of, you know, you're done with them, though. You're tired. You're sick. So if you can't get many Pacquiao, you're going to pick whatever low tier, you know, fruit that you have over here instead. You know, people aren't going to people aren't going to buy that. You know, they're not going to buy that. And I understand he said, oh, well, you know, it doesn't matter what the fans think. Then, you know, they're going to have to just deal with it. OK, well, that's the case. And why do you feel the need to defend yourself on social media? Why do you feel the need to go back and forth with the fans? And if supposedly what they think doesn't mean anything, it doesn't mean anything, right? So then don't worry about what they think then. Don't go back and forth with them. Just go do whatever it is that you're doing. You know, go do whatever it is that you are doing. And if they think about, you know, they have negative things to say about you or if you're not being held in the same pedestal as you were before, you know, if they, they, what they think doesn't matter, then cool. Brush it off then. Then absolutely, then brush it off. You know, like Bomex said, why not make three point five million dollars fighting bums? You know, and then this whole thing of, you know, I was calling them out since I was at one hundred and forty pounds. In general, people know that's not the case. Um, I think the only person he mentioned was Keith Thurman, and even when he got up to one hundred forty-seven pounds, the main people he was talking about that he wanted, he's like, I want Keith Thurman, 
and I want Manny pa and, and I want um because he's a top guy and I want Manny Pacquiao. That's pretty much all he was saying that he want those are the guys that he wanted. You know, the big thing actually was the fact that people kept saying that Earl Spence needs to call out, you know, Terrence Crawford because Terrence Crawford doesn't call out people. He doesn't call it because he would just make general statements. Oh, I'm willing to fight anybody, you know, I'm willing to fight anybody. That's what he was doing for a very, very long time. And the thing with him is that when he was coming from 140 pounds, if supposedly you knew you were going to have an issue with these guys or you wanted to fight one of these guys because, he's, you know, he says he was calling these guys out. All right, cool. You're calling these guys out. But the thing is, because of the position he was at at 140 pounds, he could have faced anybody that he wanted to have faced. You know, he was a champion. He had all four belts. He was undisputed. He could have came up and, and fought the WBC, IBF, WBA champion. He could have put himself into a space where he was automatically the mandatory for any one of those belts. Where he could have did one fight as a mandatory and then, you know, became mandatory and then, boom, automatically, you know, fought for the belts against anybody. There would have been Keith Thurman at the time, um, whether it be Earl Spence, who had just got the IBF belt. Or whether it be um, who had the W? I think did he have it? I think Keith Thurman might have had the other belt too. He might have had the WBA too. He had the WBA and the WBC. I believe he had the WBBA and the WBC. I might be wrong though. Somebody else might have had it, and he might have unified with someone else and got the belt afterwards. So I could be incorrect with that aspect of it. Somebody else might have had the other belt, but he was in a space where. He would have been, you know, he would have been, I believe he would have been able to fight these guys. I believe he had the WBA belt. And I think Floyd might have still been around. So Floyd might have still had the WBC. I don't know. I could be wrong. But, you know, Keith Thurman had one of the belts, if not both of the belts. And um, he could have just faced one of them instead. Literally come up, fight one fight, and then you got them. Because the WBO belt, you got that on lock. You know that Bob Arum has full control of that belt. So, you know, what Bob, it's called what Bob orders for a reason. So, you know you're going to get that belt. You know you're getting that. You know, kind of like Teofimo Lopez. Teofimo Lopez went and fought for the IBF belt because he knew he was going to get the shots at the WBC, the WBO, the WBA. He knew Lomachenko had control of those belts, you know, and he, you know, he knew he was fine. He would get a shot at those belts. So, he went ahead and did what he needed to do over here. Then came back over here. You know, that's what Terrence Crawford could have did. But instead of taking on a key, you know, putting himself in position to take on a Keith Thurman, to take on a Earl Spence, what he chose to do was to go ahead and knowing that there are these issues, you know, when it comes to these different networks and these different um, um, outfits, you, you know, you know, there was a way for you to get around that. But he chose not to do that. What he chose to do was to come up and to take on Jeff Horn. For the WBO belt. The easiest route that he could have taken out of all of them. And the one person where he could have just faced him later. Or it doesn't matter who had that belt. He would have got a shot at that belt. Just because of the relationship between the WBO and Bob Arum. But he chose not to do that. You know, he chose not to go after these particular guys. And at this point, people are not really trying to hear it. People don't want to hear the excuses. People don't want to hear his reasons. People want to see him fight somebody credible. You know, the people are tired of these low tier fighters that he's been fighting and they're just not really trying to have it anymore. You know, and what's going to end up happening is he's going to start to suffer, whether it become uh, due to viewership or it's going to start to suffer when it comes to the gates where people aren't going to pay to come and pay their hard earned money in order to watch him fight low tier fighters. Because who's he going to fight? Josecito Lopez? You know, who is he going to fight? One of these other fighters that are under, that, you know, that are under top rank? You know, what's he going to do? Do a, 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 a mean machine rematch that I think they were talking about before or fight a Benavidez again? Like, what you know, what's he going to do? You know, who are, who are you going to face? Who are you going to fight that the fans are going to clamor for? You know, Earl Spence continuously, you know, gives fans great fights. That's why people are willing to put that hard-earned money to go watch him fight, you know, live. You also went and paid your money to go watch him fight live. He's willing to do that. They're also willing to take their hard-earned money, you know, and pay, you know, and pay for those pay-per-views when it pertains to him because he's giving them the fights that he wants. And if Terrence Crawford were just to do something like, let's say, face a Sean Porter, the fans would do the same for him because it's the same fan base. <laughs> it's the same fan base. 
you know? So, you know, if they did that, cool. They would, you know, they would spend that same kind of type of funds on him as well. You know, they would spend the exact same amount of funds on him as well, because then he would be giving them something that they really want to see, you know, and they would be really giving them something that they believe has, you know, you know, has value, you know, but the reality of the situation, it doesn't look like, you know, like I've said for years, you know, he's not trying to fight these guys. It's not part of the top rank blueprint. It's not part of how Bob Aram works. And he's 100 percent, you know, trenched in. Believing in, in 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 what Bob Aram says, and flowing with their BS, but with you know with their blueprint, you know which means that fight's you know it's not going to happen against any of these guys. Not going to put himself in any kind of danger, where he could be diminished in any way, you know. And then when it comes to an Earl Spence fight, unless that fight gets to the point where it sells like two two and a half million pay per view, something like that, where you're talking about a ridiculous substantial gate twenty million dollars, fifteen twenty million dollars, that fight's not happening. You know, what he's going to end up doing is he's going to end up renegotiating uh, with uh, with ESPN and top rank after his contract is over and he's going to resign. He's going to resign with them and he's going to stay with top rank. You know, try to get a little bit, a little extra money. You know, he's going to try to get a little extra money when it comes for his fights. And that's going to be it, you know, because he's very comfortable in the space that he's in. He's comfortable with the tier level of competition he's facing He's comfortable with the outfit that he's fighting for. And um, I, unfortunately, this might just be the path that he takes until the end of his career. You know, and the only way we're going to see Undisputed is if Jerron Ennis somehow is able to go get that WBO belt. That's it. <laughs> but we'll see what happens in the next couple of months. For now, like, subscribe, share. I'm out.